Tonight, folks takes you across Louisiana for a look at four styles of black music that have historically shaped all styles of today's modern music. Whether you're buying a new record or out at your local nightclub for some dancing or listening, chances are the music you hear will have been influenced by one or more of Louisiana's black musicians. Tonight, we'll hear blues, gospel, traditional jazz, and a more recent style of music, Zydeco. So for the next half hour, kick back and enjoy the best of Louisiana's black music. Zodico is really the French word for snap demon. And like I always say, the reason we call our music Zodico, it's because it's really snappy. And when you uh, pick a snap bean, you're ready to cook them, you, just, you don't usually cut them or just open them, you snap them. And it's, it pops, you know, so it's snappy. I figure it's a snappy music, so we call it Zodico. It's not quite exciting. It doesn't have too much of a rock beating. And it's just not really the same. It's, uh, now, we play, for, we play Cajun also. You know, we play records from music that Cajun played before, or, uh, old time music also. But when we get down to Zadiko, it's, it's a whole lot of different. It's, <laughs> I bet I have five pieces, <laughs> drum, bass, guitar, rhythm, guitar, and the recording, and the fourth wall. Now, some people have saxophone and bells and triangles and then whatsoever, but we do well with five instruments. Well, washboard becomes from the fourth wall. Years ago, people would take their washboard and play with spoons, you know, and, uh, with the accordion, and it bring out a good sound. So we find these people here in Lafayette with uh, 
take this corrugated steel plate and, and, and when it's a regular sheet of uh, metal and they corrugate it like a photo wall, I was thinking it doesn't have the uh, wood frame. And as I was saying, all the uh, all the musicians came out lately, uh, like Bud Twig, uh, Clifton, I mean, uh, Rock and Dupsy, myself, uh, most of the fellas that plays accordion, piano accordion in this area, also in the Houston area, some of them. It's mainly, they may not admit it, but I admit it myself. We copy after Clifton Jr. I think he's the first man to come out with this side of uh, here. And we just copy songs, you know, different way, different style. Like I said, I play my own style of music, and Duplessis plays, you know, his style. But all of us tried to play like him at one time or another. And uh, the man, I, I have to give him credit. He's, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember, in, in, you know, in the piano accordion, uh, I heard people playing double note accordion earlier, you know, in the early days. But I think the real Zoddy Cohen is all inspired behind uh, Clifton. <laughs> Blues is something that it releases your emotions. In other words, people have the blues, don't even know they have the blues. And yet so many people say, oh, the blues, the blues, they don't know what the blues, what the blues really, you know, is all about, you know. It's just about, you know, like a guy got, he's married and him and his wife ain't getting along good and it makes him feel bad, you know. Or he's got a girlfriend and he think that she's liking his best friend and he's, halfway he don't want to say anything but he's watching things like that this relates to blues feeling give you a bad feeling now then you can have a good feeling with the blues because you can say you're going out and take your girl out tonight and you're all going out and hug and kiss or something like that you know what i'm just saying you know so You got to have a punchline, and that's what get over to the people, that punchline. The third line of that particular lyrics always got to tell what the guy is saying and rhyme with the beginning of the first line most times in the blues. You know?
got a fella uh, that plays here. His name is Silas Hogan. And Silas plays a country style of blues uh, that probably the type of origination, of that type of music in Mississippi, in the Mississippi Deltas, something like Muddy Waters now. And it's a correct way to play the blues because they play a three chord change, you know. Uh, it's a standard type of blues, you know. It's something that you can write music to and the guy can go right behind it and play it once he can read it, you see. Some blues singers just play the way they feel. It's not Spanish Town was, was something uh, that uh, after I got there and we got to plan and the people was just in a good gay mood, you know. And I sensed right then, I said, well, these people here are going to let themselves go. And anytime you play the blues anyway, people going to, they going to relax because it's just a relaxing type of music. And in Spanish Town, they just really got out. I want you to me. So I'm I'm going all the way with the blues. I just wish I could have got into it earlier. brass bands at that time and then they'd play it and they had balls they play at halls like the economy hall cooperators hall new hall or santa santa's hall and that's where they'd have the balls and and all that they'd advertise in the truck way back there used to be a, a horse and wagon pull a truck and i mean pull a wagon and the band would be advertising for different uh, dances, sometimes you two bands would run down on one another at the same corner, playing for different dances, and they start to blowing back at one another. You know. Some of us get on that side, some get to this side, and the piano pass them by, and we play a slow hymn, you know, Nero, my daughter, did this, and the slow hymn, until the last 
limousine with the family and pass, and we turn around and we we just play and gas it up when the sands go marching in.
Somebody asked me the other night how long I'm going to play. I said, I'm going to play until I just can't play no more. That's all. Go till I can't go no more. That's they say that keeps us young playing. The people say that music keeps you all young. <laughs> Black music started as an art form, as a fusion of the blues, jazz, and the Negro spirituals, which started during the period of slavery. During that period, we were doing what we call Negro spirituals, and they were songs that talked about our oppression, and uh, it was a means of communication among blacks. Um, there were songs such as Nobody Knows the Trouble I See when we were having private services and they did not want anybody to know that they were meeting, they would sing something like, nobody knows the trouble I see. And those are the things that started during the black church. And when, at the point where they could freely worship, then we kind of got the black gospel as we know it today, which started about the 40s. When you see the driver on that great day, then you know the terror black gospel is, is, as I said, a means of communication. It says a lot of things through the music. You're saying a lot. Instead of words, we use music to say what we feel. A lot, for instance, black gospel is not written as is done because it, it's done according to what you feel. It's spontaneous. If anybody has That's what we call in gospel music a call response. And call response is what make gospel what makes gospel music. Um, you make the call and somebody makes the response. And that came that came from our from our African heritage. Uh, back in Africa they used to make a call and then the, the tribe or the the slaves would respond. And we still have that in our music and that's the most important part of it. 